The recent financial crisis devastated economies around the world. Some are still struggling today. This event prompted researchers Christina and David Romer to further examine how financial crises unfold. They looked for insights in the Economic Outlook Reports, published by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD. The issue of, of what do you mean by financial distress or what do you mean by a financial crisis is sort of inherently hard or a little bit vague. And, and the way to sort of discipline yourself in terms of figuring out you know, what was going on, you need a definition of what you mean by financial distress. One of the things that we try to do in our analysis is to not just say crisis, no crisis. It's rather to say there's a, there's a continuum of distress. Sometimes it's pretty mild, sometimes it's moderate, and sometimes it may be incredibly severe. And I think one of the frustrations I've had with the literature is that they've tended to lump together things that may be very different. So just to collapse in asset prices, well, that can affect the economy, but that's not that's different from your banking or financial system gets into trouble and they're not providing credit. And that's also very different from your businesses or your households are facing bankruptcies. The piece we're going to look at is, you know, what's going on in your financial system? Are your banks and other financial intermediaries just not willing to supply credit? Have we seen them have a change in their behavior. And so that's um, sort of, again, a way to discipline ourselves when we go to the narrative source to say, what are we going to look for? Researchers began looking for keywords in the reports, searching for signs that the cost of credit was rising. They found indications such as rising loan losses, a reluctance to lend money, or a loss of confidence in banks. And then in order to, to scale it, we, we first had in our mind sort of basically take those you know, indicators of the cost of credit intermediation and then you're trying to say, well, did they go up a little bit? Did they go up a lot? Did they talk a small rise in funding costs or a big rise? Did they say loan losses were little, loan losses were big? Um, so that's kind of how we did the, the scaling. But then a big part of the research was you'd read a few, pa you know, you'd read the relevant pages, say on Sweden in some episode, and then we say, well, that in our scaling seems like a nine. And then you say, let's go back and look at all the other things that we've classified as a nine. Do they look the same? So that was the, the comparative, I think, was a really important part of this. And most of the, um, the existing chronologies have a lot more observations in, the, in emerging economies, so the East Asian crisis, or maybe Argentina. And so one of the main innovations partly driven by the source that we have, was to just focus on advanced economies. So the countries of, of the US, Europe, um, Japan. What really stands out when you look at Japan is it's basically 15 years when there's a, a certain amount of distress. Japan didn't take aggressive action to deal with the financial distress. There was a certain amount of doing just enough to hold the banks together, but not enough to really make them healthy so they could lend again and you know, do what financial intermediaries are supposed to do. And people often draw the distinction between, say, how Japan handled its financial crisis to, say, how Sweden handled it, where Swedish banks got into a lot of trouble, but sort of very quickly the government nationalized them put a lot of capital into them, sold them back to the private sector so that in a very short period of time, the financial system was healthy again. And so I think that's a, a really important uh, difference in those two episodes. In advanced economies, sort of on average, the effects of financial crises were not that bad. They were actually surprisingly moderate. Um, the other thing we've had, except in the, with the exception of Japan, the effects were fairly short-lived, that in fact economies got back to normal pretty quickly. I think the other finding that in some ways may be even more important is that that, that average was 
was hiding a lot of variation, that when you look across sort of, in our measures, severe episodes, so what happened in Sweden and Finland in the early 90s and Japan, the United States during the SNL crisis, what you actually find is a tremendous amount of variation. In some of those episodes, it looked like financial distress basically did nothing. Uh, in others, it looked like it was absolutely horrific. And I think that is a really important idea, that it's not always the same. In fact, there's a lot of variation. And that naturally leads you to the issue of, of why. And so I think that's going to be sort of the next step in this in trying to figure out why are sometimes very different from others.